Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's lecture on complex exponentials, uh, and specifically the use of the power rule to take derivatives and antiderivatives of complex exponential functions. This video is going to show that the power rule, which we learn in calculus, extends over to complex variables as well. So in today's video, we're going to show that the function t to the z, I could have written this as w equals t to the z, where w, of course, is complex. But anyway, the function t to the z, where t is a real number, an element of the reals, and z is a complex number, an element of the set of complex numbers, we're going to show that that function t to the z obeys the usual power rule that we're familiar with from calculus of a real variable. Namely, that if we want to take the derivative, so if we want to write ddt, differentiating this function, of course, with respect to t, of t to the z, we get that this equals z times t to the z minus 1. In other words, even though this is a complex exponent, the function still obeys the conventional power rule. And the same goes for finding the antiderivative. If we want to take the indefinite integral of t to the z dt, so again integrating with respect to t, we get that this equals t to the z plus 1 all over z plus 1. So our goal is to prove these facts in this video. First, we're going to differentiate the function t to the z, again, letting t be a real variable t is a real variable, and z is a complex variable. And to do this, we want to write t to the z in a different form, which we covered in an earlier video on complex exponentiation. So recall that t to the z can be written as e to the log t to the z. The e and log cancel each other out, of course. And then using the rules of exponentiation, we can bring that z down in front of log t. So we get t to the z equals e to the z log t. And that's going to be our starting point for taking the derivative of this function. So here we go. We want to write ddt of t to the z. And that's going to equal ddt e to the z log t. So how do we go about computing this derivative with respect to t of the function e to the z times the natural log of t? Well, some of you will be able to just differentiate this on site using the chain rule, and I'm going to go through that in detail. So recall, the chain rule says that if you have a function y that's a function of x, I wrote here y equals f of x, where x itself is a function of some other variable, which in this case we'll call t, then if we want to differentiate our function y, with respect to t, if, in other words, if we want to find dy dt, that just equals the derivative of y with respect to x times the derivative of the function x with respect to t. dy dt equals dy dx times dx dt. That's the chain rule, one of the most important rules of differentiation in all of calculus. So I'm going to just put a box around that. So we'll let y equal this complete function. We'll let y equal e to the z times the natural log of t. And we'll let x equal what's in the exponent. So we'll let x equal z times the natural log of t. And please note here that for this function, z is a constant. x is a function of t, only z is a constant, not a variable. So then we have that y equals e to the x. So I'll write that there, y equals e to the x. And then if we want to compute dy dx, that's just d e to the x dx. Well, the derivative of e to the x is always just e to the x. That's a fact from calculus that we all learn. So then we want to compute dx dt. Well, that will just equal the derivative of the function z times the natural log of t with respect to t. Again, z is a constant here, so this will just equal z, the constant z, 
times the derivative of log of t, which is 1 over t. So now we're ready to do this entire thing. We want to take the derivative with respect to t of the function e to the z log t. We're treating that function as y, so we have, again, the chain rule, dy dt equals dy dx times dx dt. It bears repeating. So then we have d e to the z log t dt equals dy dx, that's just e to the x, times dx dt, which we just found to be z times 1 over t. Putting it together, we then get that the derivative of the function with respect to t equals e to the z log t, plugging back in for x, times z over t. So I'm just going to move that to the top of the screen there and do some simplification. So I'm moving the second term of the product z times 1 over t to the front to give us z over t times e to the z log t. And then this will equal z times t to the negative 1 times t to the z, right? e to the z log t is just t to the z. And then combining terms, we get that this equals z times t to the z minus 1. So we've essentially proved the power rule for differentiation where we have a complex exponent instead of a real exponent. The fact that we have a complex number and the exponent instead of a real number doesn't change the application of the rule. We bring the exponent down as a coefficient and we reduce the exponent by 1. So next on our agenda is to prove the converse rule for antiderivatives. We want to integrate the function t to the z, again where t is a real number and z is a complex exponent. So we're going to take the integral of the function t to the z dt, integrating again with respect to t. So this is going to equal the integral of the function e to the z log t dt. And now to compute this integral, we're going to do a variable substitution. So let's let the variable u equal z log t. Then differentiating, we get du dt equals z, again z is a constant, times 1 over t. Therefore, t times du equals z times dt. Dividing both sides by z, we then find t over z du equals dt. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in now, and we have the integral of e to the u times t over z du. And I want to be very careful to emphasize here that t over z is a factor multiplying e to the u. It's not in the exponent. But I want to get rid of that t in the expression, so we'll back solve for it. So we have u equals z log t, therefore u over z equals log t. Then exponentiating both sides, we get e to the u over z equals t. Well, before I make that substitution for t, let me just pull the 1, the 1 over z out. So I'll have 1 over z times the integral of e to the u times, here's the substitution for t, e to the u over z, all times du. Okay, now combining terms, we have that this equals 1 over z times the integral of e to the u plus u over z du. And now this equals 1 over z times the integral of e to the u, factoring that out, times the quantity 1 plus 1 over z, close parenthesis, du. Now I'm sure some of you can just integrate that on site, but to make things extra simple, I'll let a equal that constant term 1 plus 1 over z. So then this expression equals 1 over z times the integral of e to the u times a, or e to the a times u if you wish, du. Now this integral should be pretty easy to do. This is 1 over z times, we're integrating with respect to u, so a is just a constant, so this will be e to the a u over a. And then subbing back in for a, this equals 1 over z times e to the quantity 1 plus 1 over z 
times u all over 1 plus 1 over z. So I'll move that to the top line there, and now we just need to simplify. This expression will equal e to the 1 plus 1 over z times, subbing back for u here, z log t. And this will all be over z times 1 plus 1 over z. Simplifying further, when we multiply through by z in the exponent, we get that this equals e to the z plus 1 times log t all over z plus 1. And now simplifying that numerator, this will equal t to the z plus 1 all over z plus 1. Well, that's great news. We've proved the power rule for complex exponentiation that the antiderivative of the function t to the z, where z is complex, equals t to the z plus 1 over z plus 1, completely analogous to our rule for calculus of a real variable. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.